Alright, y'all ready to talk about all the books I read? Because, y'all, I read 14 freaking books this month. Hey, hi. Hello. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing great. I can't believe I read 14 books in January. Like, let, let's take a moment. So before we actually get into all of these books that I read, I need to shout out the sponsor of today's video, which is GlassesUSA.com. So it is not a secret. I love GlassesUSA.com. I wear them upon my face at all times, other than the times I'm not using my eyeballs, which isn't often because I read a lot and edit a lot. So, you know, it's frequent. They are a online glasses shop, which basically what they do is cut out the middleman of the whole situation with glasses. And what that does for you is bring down the prices to super, super affordable ones. So you get the really nice trendy glasses, great frames, all of these thousands, seriously thousands of options, but you don't have to pay, you know, your arm and leg and maybe a foot for it. You can pay a very affordable, great price for these great glasses. And when I tell you, they always have a deal going on and I'll leave it all down below in the description as usual, but a couple of my favorite features. First of all, they have such an array of glasses, it's ridiculous. Like they have so many different pairs to search from. Honestly, it's hard to narrow down which ones you want. And as you can see, I have quite the collection due to this fact. I was very hesitant to buy from online places despite the fact that Glasses USA has so many cute frames and I've never found an in-person store that has, first of all, these prices and second of all, these cute of frames that you can choose from at the affordable prices, but they do offer a way for you to try them on, which was the only thing holding me back from actually buying them online. And what you do is you just take a picture of yourself without glasses on your face. Don't do it, I do. Don't, don't take a picture of glasses on your face and then try to put other ones on. That didn't make sense. And at first I was like, why is this not working? And then I realized these are not part of my face, but they might as well be at this point. So you take a picture, you move around the pupils, you can enter in the pupil distance if you happen to know that, and then you can see what the frames look like on your face before you purchase them, which is so fantastic because I've done it with every pair. It's always worked out. I just really love it because it offers up a way to tell if you're gonna be into it or not going forward. You can add prescriptions to all their glasses eyeglasses, sunglasses, prescriptions for days. You can get blue light, which is super helpful if you are using a computer a lot like I am, or maybe you read on your phone or your iPad or something like that. The blue light really helps those things that can hurt your eyes or give you headaches later on if you're using those screens so long, which I definitely do. So yeah, I will leave down below the glasses that I really enjoy that I get the code and links, all of that good stuff in the description down below. Thank Thank you once again so much to glassesusa.com for sponsoring today's video and without further ado let's get in to this wrap-up so i told myself that i was gonna try to do wrap-ups every month this year so that i would be able to like look back and be like wow look i read so many books and kind of track the trend of how much i'm reading can you tell that i'm already like i did not know jane was gonna be up here i thought i was gonna be like here and february would be up here but no no like i read a lot in january and i think it's because I read some shorter books when Terween was there and then my coping mechanism is audiobooks. So very stressed with like work, moving, stuff like that. And uh, I just, I audiobooked out of this world. So the first one I read was the ninth book in the Misfortune series, which is Later Gator. This is the cozy mystery series that I will never shut up about because I love it. There are 20 plus books in it. So we got a long way to go, girls strap in uh, but this follows fortune who is a secret agent for the government and she's overseas doing a job and she does personally the job probably a little too thoroughly one might say and now she has a bounty on her head and so she has to go into hiding in this little small town in louisiana called sinful which is where she meets idabel and gertie and they're like this little trio of trouble and it is just so fun I love it so much. I think it's really funny. The only downfall of it, which I got used to after a while, because I was like, I literally think this is just her, but it she has a lot of that not like other girls, because she's very not a girly girl and she wants you to know that. But honestly, 
going into cozy mysteries that's in a lot of that and so i don't care at this point i'm like tuning it out because everything else like i think it's so funny it makes me laugh i love the audiobooks the audiobooks are so good that i don't care i'm just like whatever that's fine if that's gonna be the worst thing we're good here so this one i thought was really fun again and i really did enjoy it so the whole series i just really recommend the next thing i listened to was snowflakes by ruth ware this is part of like some short story collection on audible and i really liked this i did not think that i would like it as much as i did because i don't know i was just like oh it's 26 pages it's like a two hour audiobook well not when i'm reading it but it was like cut down to like a 45 minute audiobook so i was listening to it while i was walking on the treadmill one day finished it in one go and it was actually pretty good and i thought it was it's sad because i definitely think that it's the reality for some people but i was kind of just like oh my god it was the same way that i was watching QAnon documentaries on hbo where i was just like is this like a joke like are we joking right now they weren't they were very serious so this one is following a family who Basically, when all the schools shut down and things got bad and the government, you know, was whatever, corrupt, I guess, was how it was described, they um, fled to this island where the dad is, like, teaching them how to survive on their own, live on their own. But some of the things that are being said and done don't quite add up. And it is a very quick reveal. Like I said, it's, like, 26 pages, not even 30 pages long. But... I thought it was very clever and very well done and I was very interested and intrigued and then when I realized what was happening I was like well I almost feel like I need to reread it because now I know the end and now you could go back and pick up on all the clues but I just thought it was quite thought-provoking quite interesting it's um you know sad to say living where I live I have literally heard these things said out loud with full sincerity so there's that. Next up, I read the worst book I've ever read, Hairpin Bridge. Uh, this solidified that I will not go back and reread No Exit because now I feel as though my my heart has been tainted <laughs> towards because I'm just like, how did this happen? How did the brain that brought us No Exit also bring Hairpin Bridge? How, how did this occur? And let me just say, the best part of this book, I think, reading it physically in the dark at night, the car chase scene was long, but I think it was written really well and I think it was broken up very well. I think that's the only thing the, good, the book had to offer that was done well. That is the only good thing about this book. The only good thing. And when I say good, I mean like acceptable. It was acceptable. I was like, okay, maybe this is the redemption moment. Well, let me tell you, that's freaking not. Because then they get to the bridge and they just stay at the bridge. I didn't know hairpin bridge meant that we were literally just going to be on a bridge for like, I don't even, honestly, time just stopped working here. I don't understand. I don't really understand what I read. I don't know if we were on the bridge for 40 minutes, if we were on the bridge for 40 hours. It could have been either one, to be honest. Oh, and there's a freaking fire coming towards it too, which is described at different times as being super close and then not close at all and then like burning the bridge down. So I really don't understand um, any logic, but then also I'm trying to apply logic to a book that doesn't have it. But there's a gunfight scene that lasts for probably my lifetime and then some, and no one gets fatally shot. People are shot. People are shot multiple times. The people that should have been shot weren't, which unfortunately I think was the main character because she's annoying as hell. But this man, tell me how someone, how, how would you get shot six times and then still be awake and plotting how to get back at the person that shot you? What? So your face is gone. Let's talk about it. Like, let's talk about it. Let's not talk about it. Let's stop talking about it. This is bad. Don't read this. Read No Exit. Watch the movie coming out this month and stop there. Don't read this book. Don't. Like, seriously, don't do it. It's not, it's not even entertaining in the way that Survive the Night was entertaining. This is bad. <laughs> it's just bad. Then, because God wanted to make up for what I had just sat through, I read They Never Learn. This was phenomenal. This was fantastic. We are following two points of view in this hair that's on my lip. We're following two points of view in this book. And one of them is a professor at this college who is essentially a female Dexter, which isn't a spoiler. That is like from page one, we know that. I love it. I also love that it's kind of like Dexter where we have the thought process going on as the narration. It was just so well done and then the second point of view is a girl who is brand new to the college it's her first year very excited for it 
it's just about her meeting friends, all this stuff. But then, you know, things start to go wrong and not so good. And it's just following her journey and then kind of how the Professor and her journey intertwine eventually. And uh, you get the plot twists were great. The narration was great. The audiobook was the way to go. If you want that plot twist to really just take you out, read the audiobook. It was so, so good. Then I read a short, I guess, horror novella, and it was We Need to Do Something. I read this because I watched part of Katie's vlog, and she was like flipping out about this book. And I was like, I haven't done that in a while. So let me, let's talk about it. So basically what happens here is this family gets into the bathroom during a tornado and the tornado hits and then they go to leave the bathroom and they can't because a tree has fallen in front of it and they can't open the door, which I'm gonna be really honest, kind of silly, kind of goofy. Not sure what the author was doing here because they could have just taken the lid of the toilet seat, not the toilet seat, but the lid off the back of the toilet and smashed through the door because house doors aren't that strong. Or they could have just gone through the drywall. And sure, that would have been messy, but half your house is gone. So like, why not? But we don't believe in logic. We suspend disbelief when we're reading horror books. I'm having to realize that it's hard for me, but I'm getting there. So past that, uh, they're stuck in this bathroom. It's a little boy who, uh, oh my God, he had it coming. Then we have the daughter who is just this emo little mess. Then we have the mom who is, I mean, ditto. Then we have the dad who literally the words liberal kale salad or something along those lines came out of his mouth. And basically I was ready for death at that point for him. So they're in there, they're losing their mind. I don't know how long this book took. I don't know how long it was, the, how many days it was spanned. Um, there was one scene where a hand is going like out the door, I'll just say that, and it freaked me out. It was written so well, it was so creepy. That was the best part of this book. After that scene, it kind of started to fall apart for me because I was just like, well, okay. So like everything's happening, but nothing's happening kind of thing. And I like answers. And I will say the ending for this book is the perfect ending because I don't think you really could do a perfect ending for this. Like no matter what, it's going to disappoint someone or not be the best ending. So leaving it open is good. Um, so just a warning if you don't like open endings, this is a very open ending as in like, Lord, what even just happened type ending. There is a movie. I did not end up watching it because I didn't like the book as much as I thought I was going to, but I did like the experience of it, of watching someone freak out over it in a vlog, getting to then go like binge read it in an hour and then watching their vlog again and kind of realizing what they're referencing. That was really fun. So if you want a short little creepy book, it would be a good one. It'd be really good for a readathon. Um, but other than that, it's it's not something that I would reach for. I'm never gonna reread it, that's for sure. And I don't know if I'd really recommend it if you're not just like wanting to read a creepy book in a, in a short time span. It's really good for probably at night. I feel like that would have freaked me out at night. Then I read In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. Uh, I really enjoyed this at the beginning beginning. So let's start, let's, let, let's, let's backtrack. So we are following our main character who is going to a college reunion, essentially. And she is super annoying. She is way insecure. And she like just pretty much wants to just go back and prove to everyone that she's better than them all, which I mean, not the best reasons I'll have to say. So she's there. And between her scenes of being there in the present we are getting flashbacks of what happened because in this group of friends that she's going back to meet there's first of all they are a tangled mess and i liked it but one of them got murdered and one of the friends in the group was pinned for that murder and i i think not like found that maybe he didn't do it i can't remember exactly but it's something where it's called into question if he's really the one that did it so now we're in the present and as they are being prompted among themselves to figure out who had motive, turns out it was everyone, who had the opportunity, turns out it was everyone, and who actually did it, turns out it could have been anyone. Uh, they are doing flashbacks in between each chapter to show in the past what happened to make it to where they could have done it. And I think the best part of this book was the writing style, the way that 
at the end of every present day chapter was a cliffhanger and then it was explained in the past chapter but then you get back to the present chapter and there's another cliffhanger that points in another direction so it was very much that meme of that guy with the red rope trying to point to all these like conspiracy theories because it literally could have gone anyway like i wouldn't have been surprised at how this book turned out I think the way that it turned out was fine. It was an okay thing. I think the ending was dragged out too long. There was a romance subplot in here that I was like, I'm more interested in that. Like, I just want a romance book about that. I don't really want to read about this, you know? Like, I feel like it could have been such a good suspense romance if we had just focused on that. And honestly, we kind of should have, but we didn't. So alas, here we are. Next up, I finished A Perilous Undertaking. This is the second book in the Veronica Speedwell series, which is basically just this Victorian era mystery. It does give me cozy mystery vibes, but it is not technically classified as one because of some of the content that's discussed in it. But it's a mystery series that makes me feel very cozy, so I think that it's just... And this romance is so slow burn, like I'm screaming pretty much... Katie and I have enacted a army of readers of this series and at all times we're just freaking out about it and I love that. I think that that's brilliant. I think that honestly that's our calling that's what we're meant to do. So read this book is all I'm saying. Next up I read the scariest book of my freaking life, Stolen Tongues. This is a horror. This is perfect for wintertime isolation kind of thing. Um, if anything, I don't know if paranormal is the right word, but it has the same feeling as paranormal horror. Uh, if that's something you like, this would be a book that you would like. The writing style was freaking me out so much because, oh god, it's just so fast paced. But at the same time, it feels like you can't even move. Like, it feels like you're just, like, staring up at this, like, dark mass of an entity. And it feels like it's attacking you. It's so good. And so scary. It was so scary at night. But what happens is this couple goes up to a cabin. First of all, the prologue was the scariest part of this book hands down. It was the scariest part of this book. It was written so well. I honestly want a copy of it just to have that, but I, I don't need it. But I loved the prologue. So just read that if anything. It could be its own scary short story. But then we have the whole book, which was great. And it did start out as a creepypasta, I was informed, and was pulled into a full-fledged novel. This couple goes up to a cabin as like a little retreat thing. And while they're there, they start to hear these voices that they can't see with any, like, there's no beings, but they hear voices, they hear all these noises, all these people trying to get into the cabin. There are certain unexplainable things going on. Girlfriend, fiance person starts like sleep talking, sleep walking, sleep laughing, which my partner sleep laughs and sleep talks. And it's unacceptable behavior to me, especially because it was happening a lot while I was reading this book. And I'm like, chill out. You gotta chill out because this is too much. I'm gonna get you out the house. I mean, that's what this, listen, this main character, he's so loyal. I will, mm -mm, mm -mm. With the things that were happening, mm -mm -mm. it was too much, too much. But this was super scary. This was the scariest book that I've ever read. So I highly recommend it. <laughs> it was so great. This and The Patient, were the books that freaked me out the most and I definitely recommend reading at nighttime because it takes it up a whole nother notch. Like it, oh my God, I was qu 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 quaking. Next up, I read a little duology and that is, well, it's not a duology because she's gonna put books out until I die because I want more. But Finlay Donovan is Killing It was a reread for me for the book club I have with Mel. This is about a mom who essentially becomes an accidental hit woman and just kind of going through the obstacles in her life she's going through a divorce from this awful man and then she's you know interested in these two other guys and so it's the drama with that with her sister some family stuff fantastic book so i've read this multiple times i love this book but then i also picked up finlay donovan knocks him dead which is the second one to this and in here we're getting we're delving a lot deeper into the other portion of the series that was brought up in the first book regarding the russian mob <laughs> I think. I think that's what you would call them. And it is so, like, I am so into it. This is so hilarious. I just love this series. It, without a doubt, makes me laugh. The audiobook is the way to go because it is so, so funny. There is a found family kind of feeling to it a little bit, which I think is so cute. I love it. I love found family. It's one of my favorite things. And man, I just really recommend this series. Like, it is just 
so good, so feel good. Definitely one that I reread, have reread, will continue to reread when I'm having just a bad time. I've been thinking about rereading this book already because I just liked it that much, but I'm gonna chill out because I got I got some more I got some more Veronica Speedwell to read, you know. Um, and then we have my final two books, which I miscounted. Well, let's not talk about it. I read 13 books, but I already said 14, and that's what the thumbnail is gonna say too because I believe in myself. But I read two books on sprints with Mel and Gavin. Uh, Mel from Mel Reads, Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. You know, just the lights of my life. And we do this thing every month where we get on StreamYard together, we get on some reading sprints together, and like y'all can read whatever you want, but we read some like weird monster smite or just like weird aliens, stuff, like whatever. We did one of each this time. And honestly, genuinely from the bottom of my cold dead heart this was the best one like this was the best round and not because the first book was good it wasn't the first book that we had on the docket was ensnared and this is like some spider thing and i'm not gonna even lie to you i was actually low-key really into the world building and the writing style at first i was like you know what if this wasn't about arachnoids i'd be into it like i would be about it but then it got weird and so we got bored because it was way too long mobby and mel just decided to dramatically read first of all let me just preface i was sober I was the only one not drinking and it was a mistake and a half but she was dramatically reading the um, smutty scenes that oh took way too long to get it was double digit chapters before they got into that and I was like listen y'all know I don't even like it like that but I like to laugh at it you know and vlog it for patreon but it was not good even it was it's too much so we moved past that we did and we went to Jack which is a Halloween monster romance and it was hilarious it's let me see it's 48 pages long basically this girl is lonely as heck on a halloween night and summons this demon with a pumpkin head and it just goes from there and it was so funny you could tell this book was not taking itself seriously and the author was like we're just here to like have a good time and vibe literally and it was just great it was hilarious i had it i, I just thought it was really funny and the live show that was so funny it was just a good time so yeah, those are all the books that I read January. Uh, you know, I'm happy with it. I think we did good. I'm excited for February. There's even more new releases coming out, even more books I want to read. So yeah, thank you once again to glassesusa.com for sponsoring today's video. The emoji for today is gonna be the little dude with the sunglasses on or a pumpkin head, you know, cause you know but uh yeah that that's all i got for you so thank you so much for watching i hope you're having a wonderful morning afternoon or night wherever you are i will catch you in the comments down below and in my next Wait. video bye hear the birds and see the sun side by side our fears are done all the good times just begun oh we know what we have let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future